<laughs> you guys are so funny. Hi everyone, welcome back to Lucy Pops. And for today's video, we are going to make a Penang Sivas coven. And also, today we are at Paul's and Colin's Kitchen. So I'm going to make dinner for them. And so it's just going to be like a quick dinner if you want to impress your friends or something. All right. So here are my ingredients. So there's going to be three of us and they're hungry. So we're gonna have two fillets, so basically one fish each. So like what you need is fillets of sea bass and you'll need a soft raising flour. Plain flour will do. You'll also need bass. We're also going to use kaffir lime leaves and we've got some garnishing. So we've got tomatoes, onions and we'll we are then going to have veg for our side dish. So we're going to have courgettes and also long stems broccoli. Now for our curry paste, it's going to be a Penang curry paste. So I'm not sure if you guys remember, I did a video about unboxing video. So this is one of the stuff that I got from Great British Food Festival. So this recipe is actually from Marnie. So I'm just recreating it as well. And we are also going to need oyster sauce and also cooking oil. And we are going to need coconut milk. All right. So to serve your Penang um, Sibas curry, you also need rice, which is boiling at the moment. And in a dead quiet, you guys can make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> Say what I showed about. We're just letting you talk about That's alright. So, and this is a very, very quick recipe. We need to then make our curry first of all. And also for today's dinner, Colin made me a gin and tonic with grapefruit and a slice of chili. And we are all on fire. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, first things first, we are going to make our curry. Basically, the sauce we're going to make. Forgot to say, you also need sugar. Oh, no, there's plenty. Right, so we're going to heat the pan. It's heating the pan just now. You need two tablespoons of um, cooking oil, any oil that you have in your cupboard. Once your um, pan is hot, we are then going to need two tablespoons of um, curry paste. There you go. Yes, so no measuring and just dumping it in. Yeah, so basically like two tablespoons. Please, please do, thank you. Can you smell it? Can I smell it? Yep. Then, put the heat down a little bit. Don't forget to ask for your can opener. Can opener in that drawer. That's the one. Yep, just twist it. Have you never used a can opener before? I have, but not this one. <laughs> <laughs> we had an automatic one. Do you use a knife? Yeah, automatic. Thing, We're going to put at least my like half. Basically, making curry sauce. It's good, isn't it? Yep. It smells good. So, why do they always put sugar in it? A lot of recipes I use, like my satay and stuff, I put sugar in as well, but why? Why sugar? It's like sugar is like, I don't know for Thai cooking, but even mum uses quite a lot of sugar actually. So, um, it's like it balances so a lot, like in Asian cooking, we use um, energy. Mm. So, sugar is a substitute, so it balances flavour. So, because um, since it's a curry paste and it's like shrimp from, made from shrimp paste, so it can be too salty, having sugar actually. And balances the flavor, so there you go. That's what I think. It is. I don't know for other chefs. So I'm just gonna wait for that. So, apart from Penang um, or sea bass, you can also try probably like prawns. You can also do that. But you don't need to like fry the prawns, you just like once you made your curry sauce, you just add the prawns or um, chicken or something. Oyster sauce. It's gonna go down a wee bit. And then we'll add your sugar after. 
then we'll add our kaffir light leaves. Paul's too quiet, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Sugar. You can make the sauce a little thicker if you like. At the same time, it's, it is up to, to you guys. For sugar, you normally put like a teaspoon. Oh, that's quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, a teaspoon. Mix it, and this should be ready. As you can see, it thickens, it thickens up a wee bit. Taste it. Yeah, go on then. Thank you. Welcome. Well, that's good. Is that all right? Yeah, brilliant. Cool. So Takes me back to Thailand. <laughs> Asia. Okay. Right, so I'm turning it off now. We're going to saute our vegetables. The longer you drink the gin, it actually tastes nicer. Yeah. Paul found some screws. Some screws? Oh, mm -hmm. Is it gold? Yeah. It's off the bar trolley. Oh, so so it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait a little while. Onions, garlic, and your veg. Only five minutes because you don't want to overcook anything. Okay. Give your um, wok a wee feel and it's a wee bit hot to smell. I have a wee sip of my gin. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, that's good. So what are you doing now? It smells nice. I'm just going to tell you the vegetables. So Colin's cat to call Beyonce and Shakira. Wait, I'll show them. Beyonce, trouble maker. And Shakira. Mm. Shakira is a peacemaker. Shakira. Can <laughs> you smell the veg? Is that alright? Yep, yeah, smells lovely. Let me bring it over here. That's it, we'll turn it off. And that's our vegetables done. So we're then going to move on to... That was hot. <laughs> oh, you're setting the table? Yeah. Oh, we're going to have a fancy dinner. Upstairs. Upstairs. So anyone watching just now, if you come to Glasgow and you need a place to stay, you can always come and stay at Collins and Paul's. You can find them in Airbnb. If not, send me a message and I'll be happy to direct you to them. All right, this time we're going to fry our sea bass, but what we need to do first as well is coat our sea bass, dry it, coat it with um, the flour. So, so um, if you get a pan like this, like uh, three inches deep, you want to use quite a lot of oil, maybe like half. Right, that's a lot of oil, I want to see. Yeah, a deep one. So, thank you Colin for being my camera man. You're welcome. Man of many talents. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get fish like this in the supermarket, or if you've got fishmonger, you can fill it, ask them to fill it with fish for you. Kitchen roll, pat dry it. Pat dry your fish, you didn't have to turn it. Turn the fish. So we are trying to get rid of all the excess water and spill it from the fish. So we'll just to so get this. So this is your flour. Get that. Before we do anything, this is the part where you want to, you might want to run away because it's gonna make a splat. And I'm going to say sorry 
as well to Pauline's kitchen because this is gonna be a disaster. So we are going to bustle. We're gonna run away because this is gonna be. Let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, you fry your basil first until it's clear, and you'll see later on why I'm doing this. And that's my rice here; it's all cooked. like why is she frying basil I don't actually know that at other time as well so actually when you eat your basil leaves it's nice and crispy so there you go it's for um, garnishing later and we are now going to get our fish stack coat it so just coat it generously trying not to make a mess and tap any excess flour and then skin first when you fry. So it's gonna do the same. Yeah, no, it's alright. There you go. So what I would normally do is I put I put it down so when they go flat, so it doesn't like this is one tip I learned as well from my cook There you go. Right, and then we're gonna move on to the second one. Turn it. Turn it. You can see that's nice color. Make sure. So we're lucky that we've got bigger pan so we can fry like three fillets at a time. First fish is cooked. So we want a nice crispy skin as well. So coating your sea bass with flour actually makes the fish crispy. So there you go. So it's quite nice. Sweet barred fish. So do you cut spring onions at all? I always, yeah, I always slice my spring onions at all. How? Because I always cut them straight. I know the shorts cut them. Yeah. If you want to be fancy, you can oh. do it lengthwise and then you soak it with water and then it goes like, it goes curly. There you go, we tip it. Okay, so you leave it for a wee while. It goes nice and pretty. Yeah. I'm gonna put um, a pl plenty of rice for everyone. Is that okay? You know, I'm generous. Oh, yeah, but I forgot to bring my um, sesame seeds. So I'm gonna use my phone to charge them off. Yep. Might have to move this one. Eh? Yeah. We've got an audience as well. The auntie's watching you. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're having a sleep, a wee She's actually been quite well behaved. I'm surprised she's not jumped up. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know me. Coronavirus, you've got to watch everything. Build an immunity, apparently, so we don't want to. <laughs> right. There you go. And after a messy kitchen, voila! For today's video, we have made a Penang curry sivas or Paul called it himself. Thank God I'm still a wee bit sober. <laughs> so we got a nice glass of wine. You need to be honest, guys. Okay. Mm, that's good. That's it. That's good. Mm. Mm. So like, is it salt? Does it need salt or anything? No. No. 
Mm. That sauce is so good. Do you like the sauce? Yeah, it's so good. Cold corn. So that was our dinner finished. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you like this video, give it a wee thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I shall see you all in the next videos. Cheerio! Bye! <laughs> I'm stuck.